Are you a good dog, Max? Are you a good dog? Can you even see? I know, you need a haircut. Cat can see you. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. So today's video, I am gonna be doing another golden doodle video, you guys, and I'm really excited. If you don't have golden doodles, don't worry. This video applies to any high energy dogs. Today we have Max right here with us sporting the cutest hanky ever and we have Bea here as well sporting a cute hanky and this time she's not going to be sleeping she's going to be up she's going to be perky she's going to be happy she's going to be active are you going to be active we'll see so today i'm going to be talking about five ways that you can help minimize the stress the anxiety uh and the energy level of your high energy dogs now I have two golden doodles. Their energy is pretty high. And you don't have to have a golden doodle to use these. They're, these are just my tips of five things that can help bring that energy level down a little bit and contain it. Um, healthy ways for them to be able to exert that energy. So um, if you have another dog, if you have a higher energy dog, like a Dalmatian, uh, good luck. I hope you can get something from this video. Make sure you're, if you're new, you're subscribed. You hit that notification bell so you're notified of all my future videos. I do videos of dogs, snakes, birds, fish, and all of the above. So make sure you're subscribed so you can see more videos of my little jungle here. A little disclaimer, I am not a trainer, a dog trainer. I did train my own dogs and I have had dogs and I have researched a lot about dog training, different styles, how to train them, what I wanted to train them. Um, and I did work with them quite a bit, but this is just my experience, my tips from a regular pet owner to you. And hopefully it is helpful for you. Um, now, before I start with the five, I do want to mention that none of these should be used in place of walking your dog. You definitely need to walk your dog, especially if you have a high energy dog. That basically means that they just can keep going and going. Their endurance is incredible. You can take them on an hour walk and they're still playing around, being crazy, wanting to cuddle with you, constant attention. They don't, they're not automatically going to the bed and laying down after a long, long walk. Then you probably have a high energy dog. So these are German Shepherds, German Shepherds, Dalmatians, uh, Dobermans, Golden Retrievers, Golden Doodles, Poodles. There's so many more breeds that are very high energy. And you know what? In all reality, we have jobs that we need to go to. We have things that we need to do and we can't 24 seven keep these little guys busy and entertain these guys. Like that's the reality of life. So will you sit down? With that said, there needs to be things that we can do to help stimulate either their mind or their muscles or their body or something to help bring down the energy level. But in no means are these meant to replace their daily walks. There's only one thing that you can, that I'm gonna talk about that you can use to replace a walk. Um, but if that's the case, then you need to be doing that specific thing every single day. They do need to have daily walks every single day. Also, you don't need to do all five of the th these things all in one day. I like to space them out and do like two of these things a day and then I switch them up. So just keep those things in mind as well and let's get started. Start with the one thing that you can replace your walk with and this is if you do this every day or if you decide to walk one day and the next day do this is finding other ways to walk your dog. So I can walk these guys for an hour and it's not enough. I can walk for an hour at morning and an hour at night and then that would be enough. And honestly, two hours a day, that's a lot of walking. So something that I find that w makes the time for me shorter but has does the same thing as a walk for them is bike riding with them. So riding a bike, I can ride a bike around the block three times, so 10 minutes and they are so tired. They feel like they got their energy out. They were able to concentrate on their mind as well and stimulate their mind by, you know, paying, they have to pay really close attention to where my bike is, where they are, and they have to really have good eye contact with me and look at me and it's all those things combined. This is also great for a dog that you find when you walk, they're too excited and they bark at people. 
people because when you have them running, they don't have time to bark at people, bark at dogs. They don't have time to do that because they are running. So they need to focus on running and that can really help as well. So taking them on a bike ride, like I said, 10 minutes, 10 minutes and they're good. And, or you can have skate with them. So I used to have a German Shepherd where he would actually pull me and I would skate and I would do that every single night. And it was fun for me, it was refreshing for me and it was great for him. If you do go that route, you will need to train them and I do counsel you to train them. Um, commands for when you want them to stop pulling you um, and all that kind of stuff. I did have a command for when he could go and when he could stop so that at every street we could stop and then we could go and it's just safer for you as a human being pulled by this massive dog because it is harder to stop them when you're on rollerblades. Just saying. So rollerblades or a bike lunches or a good old run. You're gonna go work out, you're gonna go run, take them with you and it's so great and you can use that in place of a walk. Now, I do want to have a little disclaimer with this. Uh, you shouldn't do this with puppies. You definitely don't want to do this with puppies because you can really hurt their bones. It's like making a two-year-old run a mile. Like, they cannot do that. It's not healthy for them. They can just drop down. They can be sick. They can hurt their bones. It is not good. So, you definitely want to wait for them to be adults. For some dogs, it's different than others. For Golden Doodles, they are considered adults and they stop growing at about two years old. For German Shepherds, they're adults at one years old. So, my safe thing is after two, they can now run with you and be crazy. If they're a puppy, you shouldn't have them run. I mean, they can run and fetch and stuff like that, but you shouldn't have them go out running, biking, that kind of stuff, that's too intense for them. So, just keep that in mind. Um, and I just def definitely wanted to say that because she wasn't able to run with me until barely this May, she turned two. So now she can now go on bike rides with me. Pretty cool. Really? Max is gonna be the pooper today, I guess. Really? No, don't you, oh, someone had to stay up with me. Okay, I'll rub on you then. I'll rub on you. Yeah. Okay, number two thing that you can do is train toys. Training, stimulating, learning toys is what I'm going to name this. So basically for 10 minutes a day, you can give them something to learn with. They have multiple toys and I'll link some down below uh, that you can do this with. So they have puzzle toys that you can put treats in there and you move the little puzzle piece over and they have to try to find the treats. At first they may struggle with this and it may be a little difficult and you may have to move them for them, but once they catch on, it really helps stimulate the brain. And you'll notice that when they're thinking like this, it helps tire them out and it helps their energy level go down. If a dog is like this, panting with their mouth open, when they haven't been running, okay, they're just hanging out in a house, it means that they're more relaxed. It's definitely a sign that you can tell that your dog is more relaxed. So I notice a lot when their mouth is closed and they're just like, like Max was, he's just like, you saw him earlier. When they're like that, they still, their energy is still up. Even though he's not acting crazy, he still has a lot of energy and a lot of anxiety, like he wants to do something. And as soon as I tell him to get down, he'll probably run down. If I tell him to go potty, he'll probably run to the potty. And you definitely don't want that, especially in the house. So uh, I do notice that whenever I give him like these brain teaser type of toys, um, and I just give it to them for 10 minutes, automatically when they're done, they're pan they're not panting, but they're doing this, their tongue's out, they're relaxed, and they're just chilling, and they'll go lay in their bed, and they'll just relax, which is great. I also suggest waiting to do these brain teaser type of learning toys till after they have done their walk, because before their walk, they're not gonna pay attention, they're just gonna be super, have a lot of energy, so it's better to do after their walk or run or whatever it is that you do for that day. It's just more helpful that way. They also have um, the tough toys. I don't remember what they're called, but you can stick treats in there. Or another great suggestion is feeding them with those tough toys. So you can actually stuff them with, you don't know, have their bowl of food out and just fill them up, give it to them. And that way they can not only be eating like they, you know, do, fulfilling that need to eat, but also they're stimulating their brain while they're eating, which is exerting energy, and it's really, really, really awesome. So the only thing is, it may take you longer to feed them because you have to wait until they're all done, you have to pick it up, fill it again, give it to them again, but honestly, it shouldn't be that hard because all you have to do is go about your day, fill it up, and then go, and then continue doing your stuff, and as soon as you see it's empty, fill it up until they've eaten all their food for that day. Um, that's just awesome and great way for them to use up their energy and get fed at the same time. It's awesome. 
So that's definitely a suggestion for you as well. Wow, that was a really long answer, wasn't that? that was Number three is chewing toys slash items. So for them, I love giving them tough bones or um, I don't even know what they're called, them, the pork, not rinds, but they're the tough bones and give them those. This is specifically good if you have to go to work. Right before you go to work, you can give them one of those bones to chew on and to kind of loosen up their, bring their energy level down while you're gone um, in their crate and they can really get go at that. Now, some dogs, like uh, Golden Doodles, they will chew through those really quickly. So finding a really good durable bone that they can kind of go through is really great. They have chew toys as well, like the bone toys, you can give it to them. Um, and those are just really, really awesome. Also, you can also give them frozen carrots, my guys and girl love frozen carrots so it gives them a treat for doing something good and they also get to use their chewing muscles and it really does help with that energy thing and it's just good for their teeth it's just good all around now the thing i do want to say with any of these where you're giving them a treat or you're giving them a toy make sure that when you're giving it to them that they didn't just do something that they weren't supposed to do so if they're jumping up at you don't go get a bone and give them the bone so they can go be entertained you have to make sure that whenever you do give them something like this they are going to link whatever they were doing with that thing so if they're doing something naughty and you go give them a bone that is definitely not what you want to do if they're doing something naughty you can go get a bone hide it behind your back you can tell them go lay down on your bed and then once they do go lay down on the bed because they listen to your command you can then give them their bone so you're getting them entertained you're just tracking them but you're also reinforcing them to do a good action so next time they'll definitely want to get on their bed more so you definitely want to make sure that you're not giving them a carrot when they're jumping up on you or on the cage because they're excited whenever they're the cage I mean the crate so whenever I'm bringing a carrot and giving them a carrot as I'm on my way out I have a crate in the garage um, when I come up to the crate, I'll have my carrots in hand and if she starts jumping up, I'll step back and I'll wait and then she'll sit down and I'll come forward. If, she's, if she jumps up on the, the crate again, I'll step back and I'll do that until she's completely, seated, completely sat down or laid down, whatever it is that you want and she's chill. Then I will hand her the carrot. So you definitely want to make sure that you're not reinforcing bad choices or bad actions as well or just things that you don't want to reinforce. Another thing, if you do decide to give them a chew toy that's not like a chewing bone, or if you are giving them a chewing bone, it's important that if you are in the home and you're giving it to them, that you don't just leave that with them all day long. That is the bones and things like that. Those are rewards. It shouldn't be something that they get used to so much that they're not interested in. So you need to give it to them for a certain amount of time. If you're giving them the ones that they're supposed to just eat and shred, you can give it to them until they're completely done. Or if it's one of the toy ones that aren't going to be completely shredded by the end, of it um, you can give it to them for an hour and then take it away that way they don't always have it around and have access to it it's something that you bring them and you give them and you permit them to have in that moment you definitely don't want them to have it all the time because then they won't be interested in in it anymore and it's just not beneficial that way fourth thing this is probably one of the things that I do every single day without fail with everything else that I do um, but this one for sure I always do the only time I can't do this if, is if it is uh, raining outside if you have two dogs um, teaching them to go play so what I do is I open the open the door and I let them go outside and I say go play and they will run out that's they know that that's the cue that they can go run around the yard come on all right go play go play they literally will play wrestle I've shown you guys this before uh, for like 10 20 30 minutes however long I let them go out and then I let them come back in so if I notice that they're just too rowdy they just need to go play I will just let them outside and tell them to go play and they know what that means to go play uh, it's actually pretty easy to do if you have two dogs for example if you go in the backyard and they start playing you start you as soon as they start playing you start saying go play so they start linking that word those words with playing and after a while of doing this they'll start to understand and you can just command them to go play and they'll just go play which is really really awesome and a way for them to use up their energy if you don't have two dogs you can still 
do something playing with them. So what I suggest is actually doing an interactive play with them. So this can only be done for 10 minutes and it still works really well. Sometimes doing playing with them for 10 minutes, I notice that it really does bring down the energy level a ton. And then you're pretty much good for the day, I think. They're pretty like relaxed. Obviously you still need to interact with them, but I noticed that those two together pair up really nicely. So for example, for him, he loves tug of war. So I'll go do tug of war with him for like 10 minutes and really engage with him for 10 minutes and it makes him really tired um, and all that kind of stuff as well as her. So something like that where it's an interactive game that you're with them or you can have them fetch for 10 minutes. If you just have one dog, that's a great way to kind of do that as well. You can always play tug of war with two dogs as well. There's two ends, they can each grab an end and you tug in the middle and that's great as well. And it's just, it does help their energy level because go down because they're interacting with you and they're playing and they're using their jaw muscles. Okay, the fifth and final thing is something that just can't be, is just my suggestion for you to work on. It's not something I can necessarily teach you to do in this video, but it's making sure your dog is house trained house rule trained. I'm not talking about potties. I'm talking about um, things that they're allowed to do in the house and that aren't allowed to do in the house. So things that they know that they should and shouldn't do. Now, this doesn't necessarily help their energy level go down. Well, it kind of does. It kind of helps it go down because they remember that, hey, there's rules, so I need to calm myself down and it will help them calm themselves down. But sometimes, you know, dogs are dogs and they will try to be crazy. But definitely it helps because let me just tell you, I get told a lot that my dogs are pretty cool when they seem calm, they don't seem like they're hard and when they're in the house, but then then they take them outside and their energy totally explodes out. And I'm like, yeah, it's because there's house rules and they know they can't run in the house. They know that um, they can't play in the house unless I'm doing an interactive play with them. They can't just start playing and wrestling in the house. Um, they know they need to walk everywhere. Um, they know that when I tell them to go on their bed, they need to stay on their bed until I let them come out, that kind of stuff. And they know place, places that they can go and places that they can't go. They know they can't go grab food from the dining room. They're not even allowed in the dining room. Um, and all that kind of stuff. They know they're not allowed to jump on things. They're not allowed on the couch. They're not allowed on the on my fancy rug. So there's things that they know that they're allowed to do and not allowed to do. So they're not super crazy. When you have a dog that you don't have any rules for as far as those things, they will just be everywhere. They'll be knocking people down, knocking things down, and they won't have any etiquette, just like children. Dogs are like children, guys. So if if my kids, if I say it's okay for them to jump on the couch, or if I just don't tell them that it's not okay to jump on the couch, then they're gonna, then even though they're the same energy child, energy child jumping on the couch makes their energy level go up, makes it spike, makes them be even more crazy and harder to keep. So it's important for them to have rules so they know if you jump on the couch, you're gonna get in trouble. You're not allowed to jump on the couch, you're not, not allowed to run in the house. And then even though they're still high energy kids, they're a little bit more. Uh, they make better decisions and they just seems calmer and it's really it's really beneficial for the dogs to have rules and to kind of know where they belong in your pack if you know what i mean so um i can do a whole video about how i house rule train them and all that kind of stuff if you want to see that comment or give me a like and i will do that for you guys but it is important to kind of think about what kind of rules you want in your house um, do you want them to run? Are they allowed on the couch, on the chairs, in the kitchen? Are they allowed, like is there a specific spot designated for them to go sit down, whether their bed is, wherever it is? And do they stay when you ask them to go lay down there? Um, when the doorbell rings, are they allowed to bark? Um, when someone comes in, are they allowed to go over and greet them? Or do they have to greet the dog for that to be allowed? That kind of stuff, it's important to have some sort of rules for your dog, for how happy home. So that's it you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and you enjoyed all the footage of these crazy dogs just having a blast. I hope you guys will subscribe and I hope I see you in my next video. Comment below and tell me what type of dog do you have and is there any of these that you already do that you like that you're going to do? How did it work for you if you did do it? Let me know in the comment section. Uh, I love you guys. Thank you for all your support and for your love and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.